You're lacking some females in the room. <laughs> Thank you, Mia, for coming to speak today. Please welcome Mia Henley. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is such a fun group. Um, I, I wish I had some candy or something to throw. It was interesting. <laughs> Um, but I'm really glad to be here. I actually had a chance to talk to this group. I want to say it was in 2020, um, and it was everyone was on Zoom because we were in the midst of the pandemic. But it's great to be back. And um, there we go. We have a PowerPoint. I'm going to start talking. So creative aging. Um, why do I run this organization? Because I'm, for a living, I get to bring joy community, belonging, happiness to older adults. And, and a lot of you in here work with older adults. I enjoy hearing all the sponsor ads. Um, we work with people that live at home. And we also work with people who um, want to stay in their homes. And that's something that's kind of changed. The organization has been around since 20, uh, 2003. So this is our 20th year, which is really exciting. Uh, and during that time, we've really changed a lot. So I'm going to ask this gentleman to go to the next screen. Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to share with our online guest. And so this is showing oh. up in Microsoft Edge and not in, that's why I was like, where is it at? Yeah. So give me just a second. Okay. I'll I'm going to share this so that our, there we go. Yeah. Online screen, yes, online, online guest. Online you can see screen it. to see. Can you guys see that? Okay, perfect. Awesome. Okay. All right. Next slide, please. Okay, so what we do is we connect artists with older adults. As you all can imagine, a lot of people who are 65 to 105 don't necessarily have contacts with artists. And when they look, uh, and when they live in properties, senior residential communities, nursing homes, et cetera, they especially don't have those contacts. And the people running those businesses don't necessarily have the contacts either. They know a few artists, of course, but they don't have 120 artists and musicians on their roster like we do. So we connect those folks, the artists, with the seniors. Um, Why we do it, um, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, you all, it, it's funny because I have three college age kids, we're now out of college kids, and there are times in our life when going to live somewhere uh, with uh, 100 or 200 or 300 or 400 people that you don't know seems really fun, seems really exciting. But when you're 80, and maybe you've been convinced by your adult children that it's time to move to a smaller place, it's not quite as easy. It's not quite as comfortable of a situation. And so music and arts programs can draw people out of their apartments into community. They can give people a chance to come together at a table or in a room to hear a musical performance, to paint, to uh, learn how to play the dulcimer, or you name it. And there's connection. And that sense of belonging is so important, no matter how old we are. Next slide, please. Um, we have three programs. And uh, the, the oldest one and the biggest one is bringing the musicians to the community. So actually, that bio is, is a little bit out of date. Um, we are now in 93 communities. Plus, we also bring programs to community-based locations, uh, including all 18 branches of Memphis Public Libraries. We're in all the Shelby County Senior Centers, so Millington, Arlington, Lakeland, et cetera. Um, all of the City of Memphis Senior Centers, uh, the Brooks Museum, the Dixon Theater, Memphis, Tennessee Shakespeare, et cetera. So we do classes and events at those locations as well. Um, next slide, please. Um, you know, what, what happens when music comes, like, you know, this photo is a, I have to stay here, sorry. Um, you see a photo of people in, in the bottom corner at the Katie Sexton Community Center. This is a community center uh, that has a senior program. It's down by the old Northside High School. It's not a part of town that has a lot of assets. These are not people who have a lot. And so for them, this opportunity to connect to art and culture and most important to one another happens when our events take place. Um, these events are all free for the seniors, by the way. You know, they don't pay anything to do this. If we have art classes, we provide the, the, slide, the supplies. Um, the other uh, folks are at Allenbrook Nursing Home, and they're having a big Western party, 
and it's just an exciting time, right, uh, to get together. Next, please. Um, and here's just some more um, photos. You know, this, this, uh, the photo of the sax player outside is that's at the Bickford Community Center, which is north of the Pyramid, um, downtown, north of downtown. Um, another community that, that doesn't have a whole lot of assets. And uh, Oscar Suing there is playing the saxophone, and there are 40 people that you can't see in chairs. I took this picture, so that's how I know. Um, because it was in the middle of the pandemic. And so even then, we were trying to, like everybody else, trying to innovate and to find ways to connect with people that would work with the restrictions that um, people had at that time, especially people operating government uh, programs. You know, they had a lot more restrictions than the private places. So we were outside, but still making it happen. Next slide. Um, Another thing that we do, this is a newer program, uh, it's in its eighth year, uh, is our concert series. And y'all, this is so fantastic. And you know someone who ought to be coming to this, I promise you. Uh, we rent Theater Memphis about 10 times a year. So that's located at Southern and Perkins. It is a 400 seat community theater. Many of you have probably been there. Easy parking, completely ADA accessible. It's awesome um, for older adults. And boy, do they come out. People 65 to, I don't know, 95 uh, attend the events there. We are having, um, so they're during the day. They've always been during the day, 1.30 in the afternoon. So we'll have the symphony come. We'll have Tennessee Shakespeare do a play. We'll have a band. Um, it's a huge variety, but we're leveraging what's happening in the arts community and bringing it to a place uh, during the day for seniors where they can enjoy music and arts. And this is the only thing we charge for. Um, it's $5.00. People want to pay. They like to pay. It's part of being independent. There's a lot of pride in walking up. We, we literally have all the time people come with bags of quarters. And uh, we recently had a donor ask us, um, he said, I'd really like to pay for people who can't afford to come. And I said, you know what, that's really, that's wonderful. But there really aren't people who can't afford to come. And, and let me tell you how I know, because we have given free <coughs> seats many times, many, many times. But those people who got the free seats the first time, they keep coming back without the free seats because they want to come and they're the ones who are, you know, not buying a Coca-Cola and saving their money. You know, I mean, everybody can come up with $5 and the feeling that people get by, by taking themselves to the show, it's such a beautiful spot. It's a special event and it, and it matters to them. Um, we're, this, this year, for the first time, we're having uh, three evening performances. This was something new. Uh, and I was like, well, I don't know if we should do this because what if people can't get there? And we talked to our advisory committee. It was all people who was 75 to 85 years old. And they were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> of course I drive at night. I just don't do it as much. But yes, we would come. We would come. So we said, okay, let's give it a whirl. We're going to have three evening shows this year. Seven hours. The first show is tonight. Theater of Memphis, it's a preview performance of Sister Act, and the tickets, all 400 seats were gone in seven hours. So that tells you how, and it wasn't like big church groups buying up the seats. It was groups of two, three, and four getting together with their friends. They're probably going to go to dinner at 530. They're going to get to the show, you know, for 7 o'clock start, and they can't wait because it's so special. So we love that, and next slide. We appreciate our community partners that make these things possible. And, and those partnerships are amazing. And here's a good time for me to mention, we pay all of our artists and musicians. If the symphony comes, we'll give them a you know, reasonable stipend, um, you know, big groups like that too, because artists have to be paid like everybody else. MLG and W doesn't skip over them. The tax man doesn't skip over them. So um, last year we paid artists $320,000 which I'm, I'm really proud of that because it helps the arts community and it helps all of us. The culture and arts are something that's actually really working well in Memphis right now. We've all got a lot of challenges and we're worried about some things, but the arts community and the culture community is, is one of the things that brings us together um, and that really lifts Memphis up. And these are, you know, they're small business people, artists really, you know, and so we're uh, helping them do what they want to do. Next slide, please. Um, and there's just, you know, I love the picture of the two ladies uh, on the side there. I mean, they are just so excited to be 
together and having fun and being a part of life. Um, next slide. And those are uh, just some of the partners that we have, um, and there are more every day. So um, we, we love that, and they love it too, because all of these arts groups really want to be able to work with older adults. They just don't always have access to them. Um, and so we help make that connection too. Um, next slide, please. Um, studio courses might be one, it's my favorite, it's my baby. Um, I started this program at Creative Aging, it's not my idea. It is a national best practice that happens sparingly around the country. But what is, what is happening with studio courses here has just been unbelievable. Um, evidence here of partnerships, these people are at uh, a group at the library, a group at a senior community, a subsidized housing community. Uh, a lady at the Dixon, baller, uh, uh, 65 plus ballet dancers at Collage Dance Collective, and a group of seniors um, from the Bickford uh, Community Center on the stage at the Halloran Center downtown. Unbelievable, y'all. All of these uh, groups are participating in classes that meet once a week for an hour and a half a week. Uh, we come to them, we come to their location or to a community-based location, and it's skill building. I mean, a professional teaching artist is teaching people how to dance, how to do watercolor, acrylic painting, collage, theater. Those are just some examples of what's happening. And I, I believe we have like 41 different class offerings. And so the way it works is the community calls us and says, hey, my group is interested in X. And we say, okay, what date would that, when do you want to do it? you know, what time of day. And then we, we work with the artist and we go back and forth until we're able to schedule something that works for everybody. And then it's free. The people who can pay, like people who are able to pay like communities of wealth, uh, the Tresman Manors of the world, the Kirby Pines of the world, they would pay us, the community, not the senior. Um, people who are in places that are under-resourced are funded entirely through grant funding that we secure from many locations and we'll talk about that about that in, in a minute. Um, but people love these classes. It gives folks a sense of purpose. Um, it gives them community. It gives them belonging. They build skills. The confidence that, you know, the I can <coughs> attitude that can be developed in these classes over a few weeks transfers over to so many health-related things. Um, I can make it to the doctor. I can take this medicine and get better. I can get on the airplane and go visit my kids. I can do it. And all of that, as we know, staying connected to community has a huge impact on health. And this isn't just, according to Mia Henley, there are rooms full of studies by eminent scientists from all over the world showing the connection between health and wellness and arts engagement, especially when it happens on a regular basis. Next slide, please. Here are some more courses, some, some pottery. Um, a group of uh, people <coughs> performing um, who have been taking dulcimer with uh, Lee Cagle, who is an amazing instructor. And I'll say these performances that can happen, um, they're called a culminating event in the sort of uh, the, the speak of creative aging programs. But when people have a chance to show off um, their, what they've done, it's so much fun for them. And so the dulcimer, Folks are uh, having a recital of sorts at our art show where the art that students have made through, throughout the year is, is hung for three weeks at Theater Memphis. It'll be up again September 15th through October 5th or something like that this year. Um, people love doing that and it's really amazing and it's really great to share. We recently had a class at the Brooks that lasted eight weeks and people uh, did oil paintings that were sort of in the spirit of the Harmonia Rosales uh, uh, exhibition, which was the traveling exhibit at the Brooks the last several months. And over 100 people came to the culminating event. These, these artists, these adult artists, were from City View Towers, which is a subsidized housing community down by MIFA um, with 400 apartments and an average monthly income of about $650. So. Y'all, th this opportunity for people is can be life-changing. Um, next slide, please. And, you know, here's some of the things people say, and, and I hear this all the time. Oh, I'm not creative. I, I can't do that. Blah, blah, blah. 
Well, I mean, this woman uh, who participated in, at a, a different Brooks class, you know, I haven't taken art class since the fourth grade. This, you know, what a great experience it was. And a lot of us just don't have time for art. We don't have time for exercise. You know, it's hard to make time when we're raising families and building uh, incredible careers to do all the things that might be good for us, that might be fun. Um, so, you know, after 65, maybe you're slowing down, maybe it's after 70, whenever it is. Uh, it's a time to kind of come back and say, hey, you know, maybe I would be good at this. Maybe this would be something that would lift me up or give me a chance to make new friends. Uh, we have a group of ladies who send us pictures all the time. They had a, a storytelling class at Theater of Memphis um, in 2019, and they still go to lunch. They go to lunch like every few months, and they're still connected. They, didn't, they never laid eyes on each other. And they came together, and they got to know each other over six weeks. They shared stories. They learned new things, and they're still connected. It's hard to make friends at an older age sometimes. You know, all those community contacts that we have because of our kids, because of uh, work, because of church, and things like that. Sometimes when you can't drive and you can't get out quite as easily, it kind of shrinks a little bit. So this is a chance to open it back up. Next slide. Those are some of the classes we have. Um, that is not all of them, but it's, it's sort of too much. And we come up, I mean, new things all the time. We are about to, we just met with an artist this week who wants to do music production and help seniors make their own music and put it on uh, a CD or a flash drive or whatever. And we're like, what? Crazy. But um, people over 65 are more and more tech savvy. And that is one plus that came out of COVID. Uh, people were forced uh, to learn a little bit more than they wanted to and get out of their comfort zone. And it's really, um, it's helped. It's helped. It's been good. Next slide, please. Um, so how do you pay for all this stuff? people ask. Um, we bring lots of money into Memphis that, that wouldn't be here, and we access a lot of money from uh, local foundations um, and the government. Shelby County and the City of Memphis both support these programs um, as they take place in under-resourced communities. Um, the Tennessee Arts Commission uh, is a wonderful supporter of Creative Aging. Arts Memphis supports us, the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, the Durham Foundation is a local foundation that supports senior-focused things, and they are a big supporter. And we have lots of businesses that sponsor our events. Um, our concert series is the one thing where we can really show off our business sponsors. So, you know, Campbell Clinic, Federal Express, um, Tresvent Manor, Methodist Hospital, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Let me see if I can remember them all. I mean, the list goes on and on. So we have uh, First Horizon Bank. Uh, many people that uh, uh, make this work possible. And of course, our individual donors, um, people give. Uh, we have a fundraising campaign every year, and so we're able to fund the work that way too. Next slide. Um, oh, Thank and there's some of our people. Yay! And those are actually last year's, so um, <laughs> it's great to um, have some of those. Um, Vista Points was a sponsor the last several years, and Home Care by Wesley, um, you know, lots of folks that. Um, are just, you know, so many people care in this community and so many people want to support older adults and we're seeing more and more of that. Um, there'll be more people over 65 in Memphis, in Tennessee, and in this country in um, just a few years. We have 135,000 seniors, uh, that's over 65 seniors in Shelby County, and that number continues to grow. Um, we are reaching, we reached seniors 36,000 times last year. Um, but we're not getting everybody, and so we're going to keep growing until we do. Got a, got a long way to go. Come a long way, but got a long way to go. So I'm going to stop. Any questions? You all have been so attentive. Yes? What lit the fire in you on this? You know, I, um, so I practiced law, and I had this, all that kind of busy career, and then I stayed home with kids for a little while, um, and I got into strategic planning and consulting for a group called Concilience Group. They only do strategic planning for nonprofits. So I would go into large nonprofits, which are the people that can afford, you know, strategic planning typically. The Church Health Center, the Salvation Army, large organizations like that, and help their board and their stakeholders um, figure out the path forward. 
And it was great work. I learned so much about the world of nonprofit. In that time, I did that work for about seven years, and in that time, we did a strategic plan for creative aging. Fast forward a few years, I decided, gosh, it's great to be a strategic planner. It's really awesome to get in there and help people move forward, but then you go away, right? You're not doing the work. You leave the work with them, and they do the work. That's, that's how that goes. And I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to stay and help build an organization and, and help it grow. And so when I started looking in the nonprofit sector, and I saw that Creative Aging was looking for an executive director, just serendipity, um, and, and I knew all about the organization. I called her and I said, Meryl, she's the, she was the founder, and she's retiring after, you know, a long time. Um, I said, hey, uh, what's up? And so it just, it just worked. I've always loved older people. I was close to grandparents growing up. But, I'll, you know, a lot of people are. I think that for me, when I see something that doesn't feel right, I get inspired to make it better. And when I go into the communities that I go into with my work, I see that um, people are lonely. Um, isolation and loneliness is a, is a huge killer in this country. And it is a really, really big detrimental effect on people's health. Um, we can make that better. You know, we can't fix it all, but we can make it better. And it really gives people the encouragement and, and enthusiasm they need to, you know, take the next step forward. So, I mean, I, I guess that's that's how I got interested. And then I've, it's kind of it's kind of fall, like falling in love after you get married. You know, it's kind of grown on me, um, and it's really become a wonderful passion. Thank you. Yeah. Me, I was going to say you can see the passion that you have because uh, there were a couple subjects out there you were kind of cheering up a little bit as yeah. you got involved in. Um, we hear about the, the relationship you have with a lot of folks here that you're serving. How about your personal relationship and how you can handle all those plates and keep them spinning at the same time? Can you talk about that and how you, how you handle all this uh, additional, keep the plates spinning on those? Well, that is a great question. Um, yeah, I think, it's a, I think balance is a challenge for all of us, um, but it's something that's really important to me in my life. So a, a few things. I have uh, two full-time employees that are amazing. We have a lot of volunteers that help us do our jobs. We have an amazing board of directors that makes my work possible. They are a working board. They, I mean, they do stuff. Um, and so that helps on the work front. I work from home, and well, Creative Aging has been a virtual organization for 20 years. So, we, you know, when COVID came around, that, that was an easy uh, transition for us. Um, but that's a big deal, and it's a big part of the balance, because I can roll out of bed and start my work day at 6 in the morning and get so much done, you know, by 11, and then get to my son's, you know, school play. He doesn't have school plays anymore, but you know what I'm saying. Get to the things that I need to do for my family, and if I have to do something during the middle of the day, I can because, um, you know, it's, it's flexible. There's not a lot of, it must be done right now in my job. There's some. But most things are flexible, and that allows me to balance and to let it all happen. I also have an amazing supportive husband who, yesterday I was at the city council trying to uh, get some money. You know, they give money to nonprofits. So I was making my case before them to try to get some money for creative aging in this year's round. And my husband was at the grocery stores getting the food and making dinner. So, you know, that helps too. <laughs> You're probably kidding. I'm used to that, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was coughing when she said that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Any other well, this has been a wonderful presentation. Uh, and, and, and the involvement that you have in the community. Uh, we, Lynn uh, is on board of Theater Memphis, and you can see the cooperation that they they do. In fact, she has a person that she takes care of that they go to that that little five dollar uh -huh. excitement, and they really look forward to it. Yeah, it's 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 great. It's great. Yeah, we love Theater Memphis. They've been an incredible partner, and we started this partnership with them eight years ago. It wasn't such a sure thing. And, and we weren't selling out all those seats, and it was a harder thing. So we really commend Debbie Ledge and the theater um, for you know helping build with us um, as this or, as this uh, work that particular program has grown and been a real benefit to the community. Yeah. 
Uh, does it feel to you like the career you had previously that now you get to use it towards your life purpose to advocate for people that otherwise wouldn't have? Yeah, you know, I, I do. I feel like the skills that I had um, as a lawyer are, are helpful for the advocacy portion. Um, you know, lawyers are sometimes kind of demanding people and they expect to get their way. And so I think I think that is also helpful because you have to be persistent um, with the funding part of this work. Um, it's it's hard and it's, you know, it's not kind of nonstop. I mean, raising, our budget's about $600,000 and so raising that every year, I know that's not a huge amount of money in the scheme of organizations, but for a team of three um, in doing all, you know, we did 1,500 events last year, more than that. So it's, it's a lot, um, but I do love it. And the law background did help, yeah. Well, thank you, Mia. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you all. It was really fun.